I'm Susan Murphy. Tonight on KPBS Evening Edition, powerful waves pounding the Ocean Beach Pier today, prompting authorities to shut it down. Next, the lifeguards on alert as a northwest swell hits the San Diego coast. They said it's going to be stronger than the one in 93. Imagine how we're going to end up. I was young before and I could run. Now I can't. Getting ready for a monster storm system. The worries from both sides of the border about the upcoming El Nino. Eyes from the sky may be killing the coastal vibe. The San Diego neighbors who don't want Big Brother moving in. KPBS Evening Edition starts right now. Good evening. Thanks for joining us. Tomorrow, the Federal Emergency Management Agency will release its El Nino Disaster Response Plan for California, Arizona, and Nevada. But San Diego and Tijuana are already taking steps to mitigate potential damage. KPBS Fronteras reporter Jean Guerrero looks at what is being done in Mexico and along the border. Hola. Hola. ¿Cómo están? Bien. Buenos días. Isis Rivera is an instructor with Tijuana's Civil Protection Agency. In recent months, she's been preparing students at local schools like Vasco de Quiroga for El Niño. It's expected to start bringing heavy rains this month. The agency started training schools and businesses on how to deal with natural disasters four years ago. But it has been ramping up these sessions ahead of El Niño. Some of the children told us what they learned. El Niño is cuando... El Niño is when it rains a lot. It creates a lot of wind and can knock down houses. Que en la casa debes de tener una mochila de emergencia. At home, you should have an emergency backpack. And inside of that backpack, there should be food and other survival items. Uh, inundation, inundation, uh, five cars, rainfall. The city has also created a website called Catastro, from the word catastrophe. So you can uh, access it through a smartphone or tablet or uh, your computer. It includes navigable maps for finding shelters, police stations, and hospitals in Tijuana. You see the H's? Those are hospitals. During El Nino, it will include real-time information on floods, mudslides, and more. The city has also been leading water infrastructure cleanups since August. The focus has been Tijuana's 27 settling tanks. Esa es la función retener sólidos. Their function is to retain solids, muds, trash, and when they're upwards of 50% of their retainment capacity, we start cleaning. This tank was cleaned a month ago, but it's already filling with mattresses, cardboard boxes, car tires, children's toys, soda bottles, and scavenging pigeons. It's the lack of culture among people who take advantage of the rains to throw their trash into the water streams. In Cañón de la Pedrera, the steep canyons create the perfect conditions for flooding. On a recent Wednesday, tractors lifted mud out of one of the canyon's four settlement tanks. The mud had accumulated from adjacent dirt roads. So that's the preventative work we're doing for El Nino, taking out all the solids of the tanks. This is the second to last one because of the 27, we've already cleaned out 25. 75-year-old Maria del Carmen Estrada lives footsteps away and says she's grateful for the government's efforts. She says she had to rebuild her house three times because of the rains and that she's worried about El Nino. They said it's going to be stronger than the one in 93. Imagine how we're going to end up. I was young before and I could run. Now I can't. In 1993, a several-foot-high wave of water and debris gushed through the town when one of the settlement tanks got clogged up and then erupted. Estrada says she saw people drowning in front of her home. Down the street pass women with their babies. Everything passed through here. Ovens, refrigerators, cars. Carros. She showed us inside her house, where in 1993, the whole bottom floor filled up with mud, up to the eighth step on her stairwell. 
There were mountains of soil. Only soil was left in here. The water that passes through the canyon eventually flows into the U.S. Sometimes, Tijuana residents are carried across the border by the strong currents when they get too near the rising waters. That's when U.S. Border Patrol agents turn into first responders. Uh, in some cases, they're in these sewage lines and people get trapped because of heavy rains and heavy debris coming from uh, Tijuana. Metal grates are in place along the border to allow water to flow between the U.S. and Mexico. During heavy rains, Border Patrol is forced to open the grates. We have to open them to actually keep the integrity of the grates. Um, the fast-flowing water can reach real high speeds and the debris coming through can break them or bend the grates. He says smugglers often take advantage of this to try to get people across the border when it rains. When the El Nino rains hit, Border Patrol agents will be stationed by the grates at the ready. Jean Guerrero, KPBS News. In less than 24 hours, a new bridge across one of the world's most fortified borders opens to the public. It's part of a new airport straddling the U.S.-Mexico divide. Associated Press reporter Walter Ratliff takes us inside the new terminal. It's one of the nation's busiest border crossings. Those traveling from Mexico into the U.S. often wait several hours at San Diego checkpoints. That includes air passengers arriving in neighboring Tijuana who have to drive 15 minutes to get in line for entry into Southern California. Starting this week, a private company hopes to make that trip easier with one of the only airports to straddle two countries. What we are is really an airport terminal building. It's just that our runways happen to be in Mexico, located with the Tijuana airport. A new terminal on the U.S. side of the border will connect Tijuana's airport with a 390-foot walking bridge. For a small fee, Tijuana airport passengers will be able to skip the traffic jams and make the five-minute walk to a Customs and Border Protection checkpoint inside the terminal, then head on to their U.S. destinations. And hopefully avoid the kinds of lines that you typically see, particularly at busy travel periods. Southern California resident Sam Cardiol is looking forward to the cross-border express terminal. He recently had to drive to Tijuana from San Diego to pick up relatives for the holidays. It'll be a lot easier for us, my wife and I, and for them, because they're going to cross and they're going to be in the United States. For Daniela Calderon, it will mean quicker access to Tijuana to fly to central Mexico to visit her parents and a faster return trip home. It seems so much easier and so much liberating, just like walking over and having not to wait in line for those many hours. A link between two countries expediting travel across one of the world's most fortified international divides. Walter Ratliff, The Associated Press. A new measure is set to tighten controls on visa-free travel to the U.S. following the Paris terror attacks. The House passed Bill 40719 today, establishing a series of changes, including the new visa requirement for citizens of Iraq, Syria, and other countries deemed terrorist hotspots. It also bars anyone who's been in Iraq or Syria in the previous five years from coming to the U.S. without a visa. Lawmakers are also looking into the fiancé visa program utilized by the shooters in San Bernardino. Following up on the mass shooting investigation in San Bernardino, the social service center where the attack happened will not open until next year. The Inland Regional Center is still considered an active crime scene. It serves about 30,000 people with developmental disabilities. It was supposed to reopen yesterday after last week's shooting. A spokeswoman says it may resume operations next month at the earliest. Pro-gun rights groups are criticizing Governor Jerry Brown's recent comments on gun control. Speaking at a climate change summit in Paris, the governor answered questions about global terrorism following the mass shooting in San Bernardino. He says states with loose gun controls are a gigantic back door through which any terrorist can walk. But gun rights advocates say tough gun laws actually put law-abiding citizens at risk. Well, there's, a, there's obviously a global uh, terrorism that um, puts at risk people all over the world. So uh, just as the French are responding, so too are the Americans and so too are the Californians. Just about every single one of these mass shooter incidents, they're all occurring in places or in communities or in cities or in states where gun laws are very, very strict and where we've disarmed citizens. 
California's gun laws are considered the toughest in the nation. New questions about police cameras going up in Ocean Beach. Some residents say they may not be the right fit for their community. KPBS reporter Steve Walsh says it's a balance between public safety and the coastal vibe. Police plan to install 10 security cameras from Newport to Dog Beach in Ocean Beach. The money comes from $25,000 set aside by Councilwoman Lori Zepp. Not everyone thinks cameras are in line with the community's relaxed image. Uh, this is Ocean Beach, and uh, you know this is America. We we really don't want to be uh, like London, uh, where people are being uh, recorded everywhere, constantly. He worries any crime may move away from cameras into neighborhoods and businesses. While members of the Ocean Beach Main Street Association tend to support cameras. I think it'll really help in the long run when when we try to prove a case. We've had many instances where somebody's been arrested, and because there was no film, uh, we, we just didn't have enough proof. Rick Cajon is scheduled to make an appeal to the Town Planning Commission at 6.30 p.m. tomorrow. According to the Councilwoman's office, they and police have made presentations to the community. With the money in hand, police have the go-ahead to begin installation early next year. Steve Walsh, KPBS News. U.S. Senators are demanding the U.S. military drop the cloak of secrecy in its justice system. They want the Pentagon to make records of sex crimes more accessible. Last month, an Associated Press investigation questioned the transparency of the military justice system and found more inmates are in military prisons for sex crimes against children than for any other offense. California transportation officials are testing new ways to stop wrong way driving. Authorities are adding new signage, radar and camera technologies and more reflective paint on highway exit ramps. This is in response to a series of deadly wrong way driver accidents. The testing will begin in San Diego and Sacramento next year. Wrong way driver inc incidences are actually pretty rare. They've stayed pretty steady. Uh, since the, the 1990s. There's only been about 23 per year statewide, but of course, because of the devastating nature of the incidences, uh, even one incidence is, is something we need to prevent. 14 people died in wrong way driver accidents near Sacramento this year, while eight died in San Diego. The Obama administration says consumers who missed the January 31st deadline to enroll in a health plan will not get an extension. From our North County Bureau, KPBS health reporter Kenny Goldberg explains the tax penalties Californians may face if, the, if they miss the cutoff date. The administration gave people a break if they missed the 2015 deadline as long as they bought health insurance before April 15th. Officials say there will be no extensions this time. Consumers who don't get a plan by the end of January face a tax penalty of up to 2% of household income. Covered California is hoping to attract up to 450,000 new enrollees by the deadline. Exchange officials say through the first week of December, more than 85,000 people have selected a plan. Officials estimate more than 750,000 Californians are eligible for subsidized coverage but remain uninsured. Kenny Goldberg, KPBS News. Big waves and dangerous currents today pounded San Diego's coastline. The conditions could become a regular occurrence with the coming El Nino. We're seeing waves, I'd say, up in the 12-foot range here. The large surf along San Diego's coast is both beautiful and dangerous. Lifeguard Sergeant John Vipond closed the Ocean Beach Pier as a precaution. On some of the bigger set waves, we had some water actually washing through the pier rail, just very minor damage to the rail, but enough water washing through the pier uh, to, to be a hazard. Crowds of spectators lined the shores to take photos and selfies. Few dared to get into the water like Mary Williams visiting from Washington State. Crazy powerful current. I was like trying to stand up and all the water was like trying to force me back out. It's pretty fun. <laughs> Ocean Beach resident Stephen Rowell has been photographing waves by the pier since 1963. It's nice, but you know, if, if you're out here enough times, you know, this is just kind of mediocre big waves. Thursday, I hear it's going to be a lot 
bigger and a lot higher tide. That's because another large ocean swell on top of a six and a half foot tide are expected to arrive Thursday night and stay through the weekend. Researchers have warned for months the powerful conditions could become a regular occurrence as El Nino's storms churn the water and create stronger wave energy. Sergeant Vipon said his team is fully staffed and ready to respond. He reminds beachgoers to use caution. Conditions like this, we just advise people to be very honest about their abilities and their physical condition. This is extreme ocean conditions. So if you're not a very accomplished waterman, water person in the ocean and in good shape, then it might be a good day to just uh, hang back and watch. The pier reopened this afternoon following minor repairs to the railing. Pack an umbrella. We may see some showers in San Diego. 60s by the beaches, 70s and 60s in the inland valleys. A cool down in the mountains with 60s and 40s and 80s and 70s in the desert. A fishy catch in San Diego. Several sushi restaurant owners have been convicted of fraud. This is after investigators found their lobster rolls were filled with less expensive seafood like crawfish. Prosecutors say eight restaurants paid a combined $14,000 in fines and more than $5,000 to reimburse investigative costs. Want to boost graduation rates? Start in kindergarten. KPBS reporter Megan Burks says a program in mid-city schools is doing just that. Good morning, Adams Elementary. Good morning. Adams Elementary School in Normal Heights is in its second year of a pilot program aimed at improving attendance rates. Today is our extra recess for children who have had 100% perfect attendance in the month of November. Principal Sylvia McGrade says she's seen year-over-year -year increases each month, but it's progress hard fought. All of our students are eligible for free lunch. Nearly half are English learners, and for many of their parents, getting their kids to school is easier said than done. Take Crystal Ortega's morning. Good morning. Good morning, Daddy. <laughs> It's 7 o'clock and Ortega is waking up her boys. They have two hours before Mrs. McGrade's assembly. Good morning, sunshine. Good morning. Ortega tries to sound bright, but it's cold in their tiny hitch trailer. She's hoping to pick up a space heater after she gets five-year-old Aaron to school. <laughs> Ortega has just 15 minutes to get herself and her boys cleaned up and to a city bus stop a few blocks away. Adams Elementary is six miles from their new home, but the maze of bus routes ahead is going to take about an hour. From home, we head on to, to the bus route number three. From number three, we head on to Park and Market Boulevard. We catch either the Orange Line or the Blue Line to Civic Center. Yeah, yeah. Oh my God, how are we going to fit in there? Go, go, go. Come here. It's crowded. Shh, 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 shh. And then from there we get the 215 rapid bus to 35th Street. And then 35th Street, we walk down to Adams School. The final leg of the trip is familiar, a walk through the neighborhood they used to call home. We were living here on, on Wilson on a two-bedroom apartment. And then I turned it in because I didn't have um, enough money to pay my rent. Because um, my husband lost his jobs, I was renting with my sister-in-law a one-bedroom. From there, I moved to a garage, like maybe like for two weeks, and then from there, I moved in to my sister's for like a week, and then from there, I moved into Franklin. So I've been kind of bouncing around. Ortega lost her car and separated from her husband of eight years shortly before the school year began. Yeah. Ortega says she's tried to keep things consistent for her boys, but the instability has had an effect on their attendance. Erin missed a few mornings as they learned the bus system. For her older son, Nicholas, the turmoil bled into his grades. Ortega and her ex share custody, and she can't always control when Nicholas gets to school. He went a little bit below basic because he wasn't, he has to turn in his homeworks on Fridays, and he wasn't here to turn that in. In October, the Ortega showed up on Kelly Young's caseload. She's an intern with United Way's Early Warning Continuum program. It's her job to intervene when the district flags students with attendance problems. Young then connects those families to services that might help. 
just basic things like um, issues of lack of food, um, housing, clean clothes, insurance, transportation. Those can all be barriers for parents bringing their children to school. Young is now helping Ortega hunt for affordable apartments closer to school so it's easier to get her kids to class on time. Shayna Gross is a senior vice president with the United Way of San Diego and says the program is part of the organization's national effort to boost graduation rates. We know if kids aren't in school, then they can't learn. Um, and if you're not reading at grade level by third grade, then you're four times less likely to graduate high school. So that uh, told us that we really need to start in these early grades. Gross doesn't yet know whether the program is improving academic achievement in the five schools where it operates. But she says attendance at those campuses went from 82 to 88 percent in a matter of months this semester. For Ortega, the program has given her something to smile and cheer about during a difficult time in her life. Standing on the playground for Mrs. McGrade's assembly, she learns Aaron's class is in first place for attendance this month. At 65%, it's a kindergarten class, Miss Dargan's class. Woo! And Aaron, he was at school every day during the month of November, and that means extra recess. Megan Burks, KPBS News. Media Arts Center video journalist Brian Myers helped produce that report. I'm Gwen Eiffel on the next News Hour, making sense of who's cashing in on a loophole in immigration law. That's Tuesday on the PBS News Hour. An artist in Phoenix is using a canvas where art and culture meet. Cronkite news reporter Erica Lang has more on the personal experience that has inspired her work. You want to go hang it on the clothesline? Annie Lopez has always had an artistic eye. Yeah, I think you're ready. You can go ahead and hang it on the line. She teaches her printing process to inspire younger generations. This workshop is at the Phoenix Art Museum. Lopez uses a printing process that mixes text and family photos to challenge stereotypes. At the beginning, it was all about Cinco de Mayo and the month of September. And being rejected the rest of the year. And she turns to her own experiences for inspiration. She started printing on tamale paper, a canvas where art and culture meet. Looking in art stores, you'll see all sorts of papers that connect to different cultures, but they don't connect to mine. I don't see any Mexican paper and, you know, uh, art paper in the art store. Lopez's art reflects her own sometimes painful past, growing up as a Latina in Arizona. I use it to um, cancel out the things that have been said to me or about me that have not been so very nice. And I also use it to tell my family history. And she uses forgotten photos she finds at thrift and antique stores, adding satirical captions. We've got to live this life all together. It's like, why not just make fun of it? Or find the humor in these situations. A shared experience she hopes others can identify with through art. In Phoenix, Erica Lang, Cronkite News. The San Diego International Airport revealed the first of three art pieces that will decorate the car rental center. Two 54-foot-high kinetic sculptural forms make up Metronome, a piece by German artist Christian Moller. The $300 million rental car facility will have two more art pieces and is slated to open next month. There's a lot of different associations that the viewer could draw in looking at this piece. You might, because of our proximity to the bay, you might see a fishing bobber out in the bay. Um, you may think about the marshalling wands used to direct aircraft out on the airfield. The artist, um, he was actually thinking about his childhood in Germany and this tradition that dates back to the 19th century of placing garden gnomes in your front yard. The Car Rental Center art project will cost more than $2 million. Helping college students survive the stress of final exams. KPBS education reporter Matt Bowler shows us where they're finding relief with helpful pause at UC San Diego. <laughs> if you ever want them to flick the lens, just put a little peanut butter on the end. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's finals time at UC San Diego. 
and students need to relax. It's been pretty like stressful for me, just on like an emotional and just like level trying to like handle all this work on my own now. UC San Diego freshman Belene Romero is anxious about finals. It's a lot of pressure to do well because you're paying so much money to go here. But Wally is here to help or pant or cuddle. The nine and a half year old retriever has been coming to UC San Diego's therapy fluffy since the program started more than five years ago. Wally's human Sharon Franks helped get the cuddling tradition started. A lot of students have dogs at home and they miss their dogs, you know, they're far from home and so this is just like a wonderful <laughs> thing for the students to and everybody's happy. Yeah, like let me just relax with dogs, like you know I used to do at home, I can relax with my dogs. 18-year-old Romero switching majors from political science to philosophy. She's grateful for the furry break. It's not like the dog is looking at you and like, what's your GPA? What's, what kind of classes are you taking this quarter? What classes are you taking next quarter? They're just like, hey, pet me. I'm really soft. Relaxing even the most stressed out overachiever. Matt Bullen, KPBS News. You can find tonight's stories on our website, kpbs.org slash evening edition. Thank you for joining us and have a great evening.